start by marking the height that you think the jet will be at and over the top of that place your tripod. So with this setup it's really easy to just get a line of sight, to select the next spot you're going to place your tripod and then knowing that You're going to measure the height from where the jet is, where you intend the jet to be, to the top of your level that you're siding along. That's 47 inches. And then you start up the hill. Using a bright colored paint is a good way to mark where your next spot is going to be so that you can go back and check it and make sure that it's very accurate. You want these measurements to be as accurate as possible. Head is probably the most critical measurement you can make in the entire process. So you can't see it over there probably, but there's a red mark over there that I can see with my eye. And accurate readings of head will tell you actually what the available amount of power is going to be. And make the calculations accurate so you don't make mistakes and end up building a system that's underpowered. You can buy several different kinds of sight meters that allow you to look through them and sight your next location and it will read the degrees to you directly. But they're expensive and you have to make sure it's calibrated properly to make sure that you're getting correct readings. The nice thing about a carpenter's level is it has two different levels on it. So you can check one against the other and then you know you're pretty darn sure you're going to be level because that's how they build everything is with these tools. When you take your measurements you want to be very honest with yourself and make sure you're not kidding yourself on your measurements because the more measurements you take the more error you can have and you want this measurement to be as critical as it can be because it's ultimately going to impact you if you're not honest with it. And the tendency is to not be honest and to fudge it and say I've got more than I actually do. So I'm going to say this is 60 inches. You don't need to follow the exact line of the pipeline as you are working your way up the hill. You can go side to side. You're basically trying to measure up the hill how far the pipeline falls. Marking a specific uh, dandelion or something that's really bright may make it a lot easier to find your marks. But you go mark to mark and double check it and double check your level. Make sure that everything's level and then measure it before moving on to the next one. And then when you reach a sort of important point like this, this is a uh, turn on the road here and it's going to go off the road and down the hill that way. Uh, mark it so you know what it is and where it is and what you're looking at. So a word to the wise, you might want to take some notes as you do it because if you try and keep it in your head you're not going to remember it after four or five readings and uh, write them down, take notes as to where they are maybe, might help a little bit. I get confused. Because the trees are so dense where I'm looking to cross the river, I'm going to use a different method here. I'm going to fill a hose at the point of intake and then run it across the creek and find the equal height on the other side of the creek. So this area is really difficult to read through here, uh, but I can get this hose all the way up through here and make a mark on the other side of the creek to show me where the height of the water is at the intake. So when you reach a point that's equal height to where the water is coming in and going out, then you know you're right there at the height of the water. Now that's a little too high. And that's right about where it is, somewhere in there. I may be losing a foot or two because of friction in the pipe. And it's about 300 feet of pipe. And that's a mosquito on my hand. Ah! This area looks like it will remain fairly constant and permanent and not change too much year over year. It's an excellent place to collect the water. This is where we're measuring from. 
and running the hose down the hill into the meadow. So now we've used the water to mark the height of the intake really well. And we know it's going to come into this meadow really nicely. Feeding the water from the creek into the meadow here will preserve the wetland, mix with the water coming from the lake up the hill here, clean the water somewhat, provide forage for wildlife, and then flow into the pipe where it will go down the hill and make electricity. Done a lot of measuring over the last three days, and these two markers on these trees indicate the height of the water where it will go into the pipe. Wherever we go through the hill here, we're going to have to dig the pipe deep to make sure that it never gets above that line. If the pipeline got above this line, it would create a siphon situation. And a siphon is very difficult to start on a penstock, so we want the water always going downhill, so we're going to keep the pipe always below this level. I've just constructed a weir to put in the creek to measure how much water there is. The water will go over the edge, I'll measure the height here, and then I'll measure the height back from there and be able to determine on the basis of the distance how much water is going through the creek. This is a culvert where the creek crosses underneath the road. And it would be a great place to measure how much water is actually in the creek. Except in my case, there's another source it comes off the top and meets this creek down below before it meets my property. I found a good spot to place the weir in the creek because almost all the water goes through this one little channel here. So I'm going to mount the weir from here to here and then measure the amount of water flowing through there. Here we have it sealed and you can see the weir is actually capturing most of the water. On the far end that's getting around and a little bit there and there's probably some going under it. I've tried to line underneath it with plastic to seal the bottom and the edge, but it's never going to be perfect because it's temporary. There's plenty of good places on the internet to find the map to figure out how much water is actually flowing through a weir, but that's how you set one up. It's a big project. I'm hoping it works out and I'm uh, going to put every effort into it. Can't run my oven. If I can't run my oven, I can't bake my fresh bread. What are you going to do? Get more hydropower. <laughs>